No Champions League since 2011. Hasn't got past the quarter-final stage in over three years. Five hundred million pounds spent at Manchester City, and twenty-two points behind the league leaders. Is Pep Guardiola a genius or a fraud? Yes, guys, it's the big question. It is the big question raging in football right now. The way that Liverpool have absolutely blitzed Manchester City on, on course for this Premier League title in a way that we haven't seen in English football before. And we thought we had. We thought we had seen it. When Man City got 100 points in the 2017-18 season, Pep Guardiola dared say, dared say, he had destroyed football. But football has a weird way of making you look like an idiot. Biting you on the bum. They say karma has no menu. You get served exactly what you deserve. And some might say, how dare Pep Guardiola say he destroyed football when you spend 500 million on a squad, you better win a league title or two. You better win a domestic trophy or three. Four, if you want to count on the community shield. But when there's no Champions League to back it up, no Champions League at Bayern Munich on the back of the treble, no Champions League without Messi, how dare you say you destroyed football? So it's only inevitable that the words fraudiola are going to crop up at a time like this. And it'll be easy, very easy for me as a Man United fan, very easy. In a time where Man City have dominated the rivalry in the last, I don't know what, six, seven years. It'll be easy for me to say, yes, Pep Guardiola's a fraud. Easy. And, and it'll get a lot of traction. People will love it because that's that's the in thing right now. That's the in thing right. But we have to really look at it properly. Genius or fraud? Now let's talk about genius. Pep Guardiola, a student of Johan Cruyff, comes through the Barca system as their uh, B manager, takes over a Barcelona team. A very good Barcelona team that had just won the Champions League two seasons prior. But a Barcelona team that had been beaten to the league title by Real Madrid. A Barcelona team in somewhat of a transition yet still possessing great, great quality. Now he takes that great, great quality, the great, great talents of Lionel Messi, Andres Iniesta... Javi, he puts in a PK beside the legendary Puyol, turns Busquets into one of the greatest defensive midfielders of his generation. I have my problem problems with Busquets. I don't like him. More for his antics than his football, but I don't like him. But you have to respect what he's done. Brings in the likes of Henri Davivia. win six trophies in a year unprecedented Champions League final Champions League well, Champions League semi after semi after semi two Champions Leagues in three years arguably arguably the greatest team ever in European football in 2011 Barcelona, um, Barcelona and Pep were at the peak of their powers. Now, you might say it's an early peak. The way he's looking, it's been a very early peak for Pep because he's been uh, unable to replicate that greatness anywhere he's been since. Football's a game of fine margins, very, very fine margins. So he dominates, completely dominates with Barcelona. 
Jose Mourinho comes along. Humbles him. Wins La Liga in a style when with antics that didn't please a lot of the Spanish uh, fans. La Liga, Spanish players of either Barca and Real Madrid. <coughs> but that caused Barca, that caused, sorry, Pep to flee, to leave Barca, leave La Liga. Goes to the best team in the world. Bayern Munich on the back of a treble led by Jupp Heinkers. And we knew we know why he went there. They didn't, they didn't bring him in to win the Bundesliga. I mean Bayern were doing that. Easy, comfortable. Yeah, you get a year here where Dortmund come in and a sneaker, a league under Klopp. And they were pushing. But all Bayern had to do was buy their best player and keep it moving. And that's what they did. But they wanted Pep to come in, bring his style of football, his brand of football, and go and dominate Europe, win some more. And he was unable to do it. I'm sorry to say he was unable to do it. We all witnessed it. We saw the way and the tactics he tried to bring to defeat Barcelona, going, going man for man against MSN, getting absolutely destroyed, drone board Boateng, put on his backside. Knocked out by Real Madrid in a, in a season after. Yeah, he was at Bayern. And they got record goals and record points tallies in the Bundesliga. But that's not why he was brought in. That's not why he was brought in. He turned Philip Lahm into from the best fullback in the world to a brilliant defensive midfielder, central midfielder. We saw... Players playing in a way for Bayern that we had never seen them play before. But winning is the name of the game. And I know football is decided on fine margins, but when you bring in the so-called best, you expect them to navigate those fine margins to benefit their team. Yeah, he won the Bundesliga. They were doing that. He's left. They've been doing that. They wanted the Champions League and he was unable to deliver it. And he left. He left on a high, somewhat, for a sabbatical. A sabbatical. I can't take these managers seriously. Sabbatical. Couple years. Sabbatical. Need a break. Time off. Holiday. I don't want to sound like an old fogey, but when I was growing up, managers just managed. Managers just did their job. If you got sacked, you got the next available job. If you're at one club, you just manage. If it didn't go well, you try to rebuild. Fergie, Wenger. Even Mourinho, when he gets sacked, he ain't talking about sabbatical. He just takes the next available job that suits him. No, Pep needs a sabbatical. I can't work all of that out. But you took it. You took the sabbatical. Mm, cool. And he went to Man City. Went to Man City who, again, had won league titles. Hadn't defended it, not back to back. Were clearly, as far as I'm aware, as far as I'm concerned, the best, had the best squad in England, the best players in England. But you might say that Pellegrini was failing to consistently get the best out of them. You know, they win the title under Mancini, dropped off. Win the title under Pellegrini, dropped off. They needed that consistency. Player for player, nobody for me, nobody could contest. And Pep came in. And people said, now this is the moment. This is what we want to see. Can Pep bring his football to England? Can he dominate the Premier League like he did in the Farmers Leagues? Of La Liga and Bundesliga. I, for one, always believed he could. I'm not, I said, I'm not the biggest Pep Guardiola fan. I don't think he's even the best manager of his generation. He's definitely not the best manager of all time. But I rate Pep Guardiola. I know he's a quality manager. So I didn't doubt that he'd be able to bring that style of football 
into England with the players at his disposal. There's an argument people used to can Messi do it in the Premier League? Can Messi do it in the Premier League? And I'm like, well, I've seen Aguero do it in the Premier League. I've seen Suarez do it in the Premier League. I don't see why Messi can't do it in the Premier League. I've seen teams like, and, and similarly, I've seen teams like Swansea come and play good football and do well for their level in the Premier League. I've seen, I saw Blackpool play good football and, you know, put up a good fight for their level. So why can't Pep come and bring his football to the Premier League with the quality of players at Man City and more money to spend? I, had, I was in no doubt. But I tell you what, he even shocked me. I wasn't expecting him to do what he did. First season was difficult. And, it, you know, the doubters were even in more full, full voice. Fraudy old, I've told you, you can't do it. Premier League different. How can you not teach tackling? Blah, 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 blah. And that was the season. He said, look, shake. Kaloud al-Mubarak. I need some I need some money. I need some players. I can't deal with these, these fullbacks. I need to spend 50 million on fullbacks. I need to spend 50 million on stones. Let me go get a backup for Aguero. Man like Sterling, Sane, Gundogan. Pep had to build his team, build his team. And I mean, I mean, the spine of the team, to be fair, is very similar to what it was when he joined. Obviously, we know he got rid of some people like uh, Yaya Toure, for example. But the spine is very similar. At least it was last year. But he bought a goalkeeper. Quite Claudio Bravo. Didn't work. Spent another bag of money. Bought another goalkeeper. And this is why he gets criticised. Because, I mean, he can only use the resources available to him. So if the money is there, why, why would you not spend it? Why would you choose to try and build up a player in the hope that they become the player you want them to be? When the money is there readily available to get the player who you really want, the quality of player that you want. People only don't spend money when the money is not available. Name me a manager who chooses not to spend the money available. Don't worry, I'll wait. No, let me know. Don't worry, I will wait. That manager don't exist. When the money is there, <laughs> the manager spends it. Some managers aren't as blessed. They're not, they're not at a team where they can spend that money. Guardiola has been at those teams. So some will say he's got an easy ride. He hasn't had to, you know, manage a scumful. I mean, who, who has? Who has managed a scumful? Um, but he came, bought the players that he needed, improved players that was there, and dominated the league. 100 points. 98 points. Something the Premier League had never seen in terms of the style of football, the amount of goals, the points accumulated, the consistency. Some say he revolutionised English football. I wouldn't go that far. But you see the way that teams are playing out from the back. And for me, a lot of them ain't even good enough to do it. You can't say he hasn't had an influence. Of course he's had an influence. A great coach like him. I expect him to have that influence. But genius or fraud. Genius or fraud. Because he wasn't brought to Man City to just dominate the league. Man City fans are happy though. Because for them winning the league when Man United has been dominating for all their life. That's massive. To be the best club in Manchester. Is a lot is a, a, enough for a lot of them. Don't get it just twisted. But they weren't the ones who hired Pep Guardiola. They were not the ones who gave him the mantra, the job description. And that job description, without a shadow of the doubt, and if we're talking about putting Man City on the map, I'm talking about the map of world football. It's all good winning your leagues. Nobody cares. England, we care. In your domestic country, you care. But globally, nobody cares. Nobody cares. If you want to really be talk, spoken about as a great team, 
at the top table with the, the real giants of football, you have to win a Champions League. Have to. And that's what he was brought in to do. He was brought into Bayern to do that. Failed. He'd been brought into Man City to do that. And to this day, he has failed to do that. Now he's 22 points behind Liverpool. And you have to ask, is that unforgivable? Losing the league title is not unforgivable. It can happen to anyone. 22 points behind. And it ain't even Valentine's Day yet. Someone needs to show Pep some love. Because I can't give it to him. I really can't. That is poor. Inexcusable. Absolutely inexcusable. And you say you have to say well done to Liverpool because you're not in control of, I guess, their level of consistency other than the fact that you might beat them when you play them. But from getting 100 points and 98 points to now being level on points with Leicester, you have to question Man City. You have to question what they've done, what they did prior to the season in the, in the transfer window. And how they've performed this season. And it's been too inconsistent. Even by their own standards. Forget what Liverpool's doing. By their own standards that they have set. By the man who had destroyed football. Unforgivable. Well, of course we'll be forgiven. If he wins the Champions League. But he's failed to do so so far. He hasn't got past the quarter final stage. Now... I think his time in England is really going to define him. Because he can leave Man City without winning a Champions League. And he could go to a, a PSG or a Juventus, win the Champions League there. But I'm not sure it's going to have the same effect. Because you're going to the best teams in those countries and having a free ride, basically. A free hit at the Champions League because the league is kind of won before you even join. You had the opportunity at Bayern and you fluffed it. You go into Man City, you go into the Premier League where the competition is stronger so you have to kind of fight on all fronts. And you fluffed it so far. This season, you're not fighting on the Premier League front. That's gone, that's finished. So there's really no excuse if we're being honest you're getting your players back just at the right time Sane Laporte you're going to be able to rest up where, where necessary and the quality of player I mean we've seen it over the last couple of years it is there how many squads in Europe can say that they have a better squad player for player than Man City you'll be hard pushed there's no excuses. In the past, he said they're not ready. They're not ready. They're not. When are they going to be ready? Pep, you've been there three years. When are they going to be ready? And what are you going to do? If it don't work out, you're going to run. Run from Klopp. Run from the challenge of the Premier League like you did in La Liga when you ran from Mourinho. His time in England is going to be career defining. 100%. And it's not to do with it be in England because he could have managed in England first it may or may not have worked out gone somewhere else and that might be the career defining but for what he's done so far in his career for me this is the career defining winning two Champions League with, with Messi, Iniesta and Xavi is commendable but it's somewhat expected Going to Bayern and not winning the Champions League or even getting to a final. Underachievement. Not getting past a quarter final with Man City. Absolute disgrace. This is his chance. This is his year to prove his doubts wrong. Genius or fraud. I mean, that's not for me to say. His legacy and record in football will be de determined. And be defined by what he wins. That's just the reality. It is a results business. And as long as he ain't running away from the challenges. He's got time to do that. So let me know in the comments below guys. Pep Guardiola, genius or fraud. Which one will it be? 
Make sure you hit the like and subscribe button, guys. I'll see you soon.